Howdy everyone, Farmer Min here. Welcome back to Oregon Springs. Yes, we are continuing to be busy. Um, we are on our last field, which is field uh, 35 here, just kind of down by the farm. Aubrey, she is out spreading fertilizer, and I got the tractor parked right over here, and I will get going here in just a little bit. Um, get this field done and then we are done with our spring field work um, if we look into the seasons menu you know it says it's too um, soil temperatures are too cold yet but we can still get going uh, we can certainly do that uh, we'll get back here because it is you know well, soil temperature say 34 I mean it is, it is a little on the nippy side but what we had planned is if we look at this map Let's see, can you remember we had planned here? 24 we had planned for sugar beets, 36 we had planned for soybeans, and 35 was going to be our wheat or barley field, depending on what we feel is right. We can go ahead and get started on that, I think. Um, soybeans and sugar beets, we certainly cannot, um, cannot plant yet, but we can get going on the... Uh, wheat or barley. Let's just look at the current market market prices, although it's not going to matter today. But, you know, they're, eh, they're kind of equal. Wheat or barley, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, either one is just fine with me. Um, but let's get in the tractor and get going. Boy, the tractor's getting dirty, I tell you. Boy, it, you know, it works hard, though. It certainly works hard, and... Uh, We've got a lot of use on it already. I looked it over this morning. It seems to be uh, okay. Uh, nothing nothing broken. No major problems there whatsoever. Um, but it's been a fun day. It's been a fun day so far. Uh, you know, a little different getting in the bigger equipment, I tell you. A lot different. I think we'll just go up this edge here. Then we'll cut across the headland over there. That would work out wonderful. And then, once this is done, depending on how long this is going to take, um, then we got to do a do a uh, planter. We got to get a planter. I'm kind of kind of leaning towards that Great Plains one, though. I got to be honest with you, I really am. Um, I think that would be the one to have. Let's see. Set that back down. Everything looks good to go. Everything locked into place. We can rock and roll. On a little bit of side note, I thought I would bring something up. Um, many of you have probably maybe checked it out, but the um, the new map, um, Old Slovenian Farm. Um, you know, it's kind of a conundrum. Uh, you know, it's nothing that I was expecting. I was expecting a uh, top-notch um, map, but boy, oh boy, that was just uh, kind of took me by surprise. I was a little surprised when I saw all the the problems with that map, and I hope they get that figured out because I I think that'd be a fun little map to do some cool things on. You know. Um, you get onto a big map with big machinery and big equipment, and then you say to yourself, "Oh, you know, I should do a little map with uh, with small equipment and small machinery." And then you do that for a while. Oh boy, I got I got to get back on the big map. I, I love the big stuff, you know. Um, and I tend to be one of those that uh, that like the big stuff. I mean, I do. I uh, you know, because that's in my, you know, in my neck of the woods, you know, we got big stuff. So that's what I like about it. Um, certainly have nothing against uh, little stuff. Don't get me wrong. I uh, I certainly don't. I'm a big fan of the of the smaller maps and the smaller equipment as well. But um, you know, I think I kind of lean towards the uh, big stuff. I like that. Um, probably like that a little bit more. And I wish I had some options. You know, I wish we had more options for. Um, um, nothing against, nothing against Giants, nothing against the sea. Where did I, I lost Aubrey here. Oh, I'm getting a little carried away of myself. Let's see. She hasn't spread here yet. You know, one thing about, uh, 
Yeah, she's way over here. I gotta get out of the way here. One thing about urea, um, granular nitrogen, um, when you when you spread it on a field like this and uh, um, go out there, uh, you can certainly tell because it almost looks like it, uh, it snowed a little bit. That is for sure. I guess it would depend on how many pounds per acre you're putting down, but um, but yeah, well she should almost be done, and then I can continue going here. Um, we'll just wait a little bit, and uh, we'll wait for her to get caught up, or I mean get the field done. When she gets the field done, then we can be good to go. Well, I suppose I could. I suppose I could just find myself a nice line and continue that way. Do that. There we go. We'll just do this. We'll stay on this side. Let her finish. That way we can get ahead. I want. I. You know. I don't. We're not gonna get it planted. Well, you know, we can get. I don't know. Could maybe get a planet today. That might be an opportunity, but I would highly doubt that. That would just be too getting a little too carried away, depending on the time we get done with this thing. Um, you know, I remember uh, many times during spring um, planting season where we would have, um, well, you'd almost find, uh, let's see, one, about four tractors in a field at the same time. You'd have uh, this guy, the guy driving the uh, you know the four-wheel drive with the uh, super weeder on it and then you would have the guy driving another tractor and that would be I think it was a at that time a John Deere 8120 would be what that was and that would be um, a Harold Packer the Harold Packer that would be um, it's got like little fingers on it, um, like a, if you know what a harrow is, and then the uh, like rollers in the back, which kind of pack it down. That would uh, pack uh, pack the soil, compress the soil a little bit, and then the uh, planter would come around. That'd be another tractor, and that would be planting sugar beets. Because when you use a coil packer, you'd be planting sugar beets. Not necessarily every year, but for the majority, yeah. Um, Oh, I missed a little spot there. That sucks. And then the fourth tractor, you could probably have a... Uh, uh, well, I guess it wouldn't be necessarily a tractor. It would be more of a truck, a tender, a seed tender. So it could be busy, very busy. Uh, that is for sure. All kinds of stuff going on. Let's see, how far away should I be? This is probably too close. Oh, maybe not. Just right on the money, I tell you. I'll get a little bit closer, leave a little bit of overlap. That's eh, not too shabby. Let's just see. Oh, I missed it. I was doing just fine there until I went out, outside. Boy, the outside view really kind of screwed it up there. But yeah, ah, beautiful day though. Beautiful day here in Oregon. That would be another wonderful thing to have for a console, wouldn't it? GPS. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Uh, everybody said that you're never going to get seasons on console. Well, even I, I kind of was figuring that. And then here we are, half seasons. So anything's possible, I would say. I wouldn't rule anything out. And with FS19, you know, you just never know. Make sure, make short work of it, though. This, um, this, uh, I, I would call it a super weeder. This uh, cultivator, they're gonna label it under, but. Um, yeah, it doesn't take very long. That is for sure. I 
Aubrey, she must be close to done. Well, we'll see if she gets done here, and then uh, finish up this little corner, and then we can continue on with this. I think you never know. I think we might uh, be close to, uh, well, probably won't be getting planting today, but we could certainly uh, go and buy ourselves a planter and a tractor. I'm kind of leaning towards the case. I, I am. Just, you know, Case New Holland, they're, they're the same. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Now I got two spots I missed. Case New Holland, that's kind of the same thing now these days. So having a case in a New Holland on the farm is um, not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Certainly uh, can be done. Oh, there she is. She's still got a few things left. Then I do have to say, those, um, I like those new force combines. I really do. I think that is an awesome mod. Uh, great detail. Um, pretty cool to learn about the history of that, um, that company. And, you know, I guess I didn't read much about if it's still around. Well, it was taken up by case. So I suppose it was all rebranded. So I suppose you're not going to see, um, you know, they're not going to be manufactured with that brand name anymore, but I, I thought those were pretty cool. I really, really did. Yeah, I kind of made a few extra passes here. That was my bad. You know you can make a good turn when, uh, if you're turning on to the inside, and you look at this, uh, this, the outside tire here on your inside corner. If you can make the turn at where that tire is just barely moving, just barely moving, you made a good turn. If that tire starts to turn backwards, you're turning too sharp. Like, right now, it's now the tire's going backwards, you're turning too sharp. But if the tire stays uh, just slowly moving forward, it's a good turn. Kind of a rule of thumb that I always followed. I don't know how I feel about these. You know, I guess um, these trees that are kind of the fall color year round. I guess it adds a little color to the map, but uh, I suppose in the long run you would have um, liked to have seen them uh, change with the seasons, but that's okay. Well, we'll talk to Aubrey here and see what the plan is, and uh, we'll see how far I can get on this field. See you in a little bit. I am at the dealership. Yes, by the look of my money, I, <laughs> I have been shopping. I've been on a shopping spree. Um, Aubrey took over for me. I think she finished that field and brought the tractor back to the farm. Um, gave me a ride down here before she uh, finished that up. And I have been busy. I actually was uh, pretty busy. I came down to the store to look at equipment and ran into a gentleman who, uh, from the Farm Bureau, I believe, uh, asked me if um, I was interested in land. Land? I said, well, I really can't afford land. Um, I guess I'm just getting going. I got equipment. He said, well, what happened is, is a uh, family owned this land, and then the one spouse died, and all the other brothers were fighting over the land, so it was going pretty cheap. You can get the two parcels for, for 50000 I said, well, I'll take a look at it. So I did, and I ended up buying it. Now, this is not a arable arable land. This would be um, forest land. So I bought a, I bought two parcels of forest land for $50,000. Um, so I figured, hey, that's going to get me going for a little bit. So I did that. And then I bought a tractor. I did. They should have it in the back here. They were getting it all cleaned up and fueled up. And uh, had to make a few adjustments to the uh, electronics monitors on the inside. So that should be right back here. 
least I hope so. I hope they have it done. I kind of, I'm kind of interested in it. But, yep, there it is. Fine, outstanding tractor. I bought a case. I bought the Case Magnum 380. I bought the one with the twin wheels. I'm kind of a fan of the twins. Um, real big fan of the twins. So I did that, and I had a weight put on. Didn't have a weight on there on the lot, but I put a weight on it. So I got that puppy. This thing is awesome. It's got the deluxe lux luxury cabinet. Fancy red leather seat. You know, you can't go wrong with that. And, uh, yeah, all the bells and whistles. So I'm excited about that. I have that. I also bought a few other pieces of equipment. And I was thinking to myself, self, what would be the best bet for the farm? And uh, I came to thinking that I really want this planter. I do. And eventually I am going to buy this planter. I really am. This is an outstanding planter. And, you know, put your imagination hats on, okay? We're going to pretend this is a John Deere um, roll crop, 24 roll crop planter, okay? So I'm going to buy this. Now, you don't plant wheat in a roll crop planter. You solid seed wheat, okay? So, yes, this does plant wheat, but in my head, I just can't get around planting wheat with this thing. You plant wheat with a drill, you know, uh, like an air drill, for example, and they happen to have one here. They happen to have this puppy. Now, I know this is big. A little bigger than I would like. I wish that um, we had the ability to have smaller drills on this um, game, but we don't. Um, so we're going to pretend, put your imagination hats back on again, that this is a, <laughs> it's going to be hard to do because it's red. But let's just, for conversation's sakes, we have a John Deere 1890 air seeder drill. Okay, that's what this puppy is. Um, an 1890 John Deere is 60 feet wide. Well, it comes in various legs, but 60 feet wide. Um, so that's okay. And then we're going to pretend this is a John Deere 1890 grain cart. Cart. Okay. So that's what I bought. This is going to be my uh, my wheat planting machine. Okay. Now I didn't buy this tractor to to go on here. Um, my New Holland will pull this puppy. So that is all fine and dandy, because I, I just, I can't get it through my head to plant wheat with a, um, a row crop planter. Now, yes, I could, I could have bought, I could have, this horse one, um, but, you know, not a lot of horse seeders in Oregon, and, uh, in the U.S., for the most part, wheat is planted on, on farms of, you know, bigger sizes. You're not going to see this on a 500-acre farm, more than likely. But this is how we plant wheat, barley, and you can plant soybeans with it. I've, I've done it, so you can. Uh, you can solid seed foy soybeans. And then in most cases, um, you can change the planter setup. So... It would usually, for instance, okay, let's put it this way. Um, on the John Deere 1890 air drill, which I'm kind of going by, like this thing kind of looks like, there's two gangs. There's a front gang and a back gang, and they're offset. So when they're both running, it would be solid seating, but you can, sh you can either run a front gang or a back gang. So that's what we're just going to kind of go with. This is also a no-till drill. So this does not have to be cultivated in case I wanted to do that. Okay? So that's why I went with it. Just for the fact that I just can't get it through my head to plant wheat with this thing. So that's what I bought. I also leased a piece of equipment from the sawmill. And that cost me $29,000 for the week. Yes, I know it's not what the game would, would allow. But, you know, come on. Let's put it, you spend $29,000, you're going to get it more than a week on any piece of equipment. It doesn't cost you $29,000 and then, um, you know, whatever, $5,000 a day to lease a tractor. That's just stupid. It's unrealistic. 
So for this sake, 29000 for the week. So today is Wednesday. I have it until next Wednesday. Okay, so that's what I did. So that's why my money is down to 122000 So I'm going to hop into the tractor. And I'm going to pull this, uh, my new cedar, back to the farm. Um, it will pull it without um, no problem. I mean, I don't think, I, I'm not going to be seeding with it. But I can certainly transport it back to the farm. <coughs> excuse me, without any operation. But I like this thing uh, just because it's... Um, in the realistic realm of what we, what I see on a daily basis. Now the only difference is, and I've seen them both, I've seen like cases in Massey Ferguson's where the cart is in front of the drill, but on a, on a 1890, 1910 John Deere setup, the cart is actually behind the drill. So it can go either way, just depending on the, the setup. But we're gonna go with it. So we're gonna haul this back to the farm and then I'm going to show you my two parcels of land that I purchased. And then we got to head to the sawmill and, um, and get that set up. So I will see you once we get closer to the farm. Here's kind of the other justification that I have in my head with this um, cart cedar setup is that, um, yes, certainly we have smaller size fields. But we also have some pretty decent sized fields. So as the farm grows and we keep adding fields, um, let's say you're planting uh, four fields of wheat or barley. Hey, you want a big cedar to be able to get the stuff done. So, you know, even on a farm of decent size here in the US, you may have one field that's only 40 acres uh, another field that's a quarter, 180 acres. You don't change cedars because of the field size. You're still using the same, you know, drill, cedar, planter for all of it. So that's where I can justify it. So, so I like this. I think it's cool. Um, I'm not a big fan of the big bud pack one, the big uh, seed hawk thing. That's just, you know, that's just huge. And uh, let's see, where should we park this stuff? I also, this is one of those things where you don't want to back up too much, so this could be interesting here. I think I'm just going to park it over here for now, because what I normally would do is I would unhook them and uh, put them away that way, um, you know, like in a shed side by side, but uh, we're going to be using it here shortly, and I was thinking about if we should just go out and plant right away, but I'm thinking, you know, it is on the... Um, on the colder side. We'll just park it right there. That's a good spot for it. It is The temperatures are on the colder side, and in reality, um, you would not be planting wheat when it's this cold. You would wait for soil temperatures to get, because you don't want to plant the seed and then have the seed, um, especially certain varieties, just sit dormant for a um, period of time. Let's see. This tractor, we can put in the garage. Let's get stuff cleaned up here. I like to have a nice clean yard. Um, I'm going to put the tractors in this building for now. I got the um, the new hall and the uh, T6. No, we have T7. T6. Which one did I buy? T6. T6, as I said. Got the T6 in here. So we'll put the, uh, the case magnum in here. That'll be good. And then, um, and then this thing. The problem with this thing is you can't back it up. I mean, it's in the. I know in the game you can, but you you cannot back this thing up. It's not going to happen. So we have to find a home for this thing. And this thing is. I tell you what, we'll leave that there because um, we'll get that washed up. Oh, I did. That's the other thing I did. Um, I did purchase a uh, power washer, a Karcher. Which is, you know, not a bad power washer. Don't get me wrong. Um, matter of fact, I've owned many carters in my life, but I've never really had good experience with them. But that is right here. Uh, just pretend we have like in a big, uh, big uh, Aladdin, Aladdin power washer that would be like um, diesel fuel fired or, or um, I think with kerosene. I think you could put kerosene in there. Can't put gasoline. Don't put gasoline. But you could put diesel fuel in it. So pretend we got one of those. But I got the power washer there. So we'll get that 
washed up and I have to find a home for this um, this super beater. But here's what I want to do now. Um, unless I should go down to the sawmill first. Maybe I can find a ride down there. Otherwise, I have to take the pickup truck and then I'll be stuck there. Or if I should show you what we got. No, let's go down to the sawmill. I'll see if, um, I think Aubrey's still around. I'll see if she'll give me a ride down to the sawmill and I'll see you there in a second. We are all ready to go. Got everything all checked out, signed the paperwork. We have leased the equipment, and there it is. Yes, I have leased the Scorpion King. I thought, what the heck? Um, I bought the land. We are going to make use of it, and we are going to develop it. So I am going to take it and have fun. The semi and the truck, um, they're going to let me haul it. This is theirs, not mine. Um, they let they let you deliver the um, Scorpion King. They usually do that, but the guy was busy today, and I said, I'm going to find an outstanding truck driver, so they're going to let me haul it down there. But I'll show you, well, I'll show you where we're going. I'll show you what I bought. Um, go into the map here. Oops. As I was doing a few things, I changed that, so I wouldn't waste time. Um, here's what I bought. Two parcels of land. A very small parcel right here kind of comes on the back side of the blue line feeds up this way very small kind of borders 26 here yep that was the first parcel that I bought right there there's a little gravel road in there I, I looked at it very nice and the second parcel that I bought is this little triangle piece right here so I bought these two these two parcels yep 50,000 I paid 25,000 a piece for these two parcels and I think that's going to be outstanding I mean, we're not too far from the farm here. Here's the farm, so just a hop, skip, and a jump away. So my thinking is, we can start clearing this out, and then we can, uh, you know, develop it. I'm thinking, um, well, this one, I think this triangle one is a pretty nice size. I think we can plow that under and make that a field. And then this one here, kind of this odd shape, it kind of curves around. You know, maybe we could do um, something else in there. Maybe even plant more trees or do some poplars or do something in there. That would be outstanding. So that's what I bought. Those two little parcels here. And I'm thinking down the road I might buy 26. So if you kind of look at our map, you know, here's, here's our three fields here in the blue. You know, here's our farm. So right now we're kind of located down here. I mean, there is options to expand. But right now let's focus near the farm. It works out good. Everything's here. So I like that idea. Um, on a side note, I know I didn't have to purchase. Hang on there, buddy. Purchase that. But, you know, I just, in my head, I just wanted to justify that I'm going into a forest and going to cut down trees. And you just don't go into a forest and cut down trees or you feel like it. So by buying it, just kind of justifies it. And I deducted it off the balance. So it's all good. Now, the only other decision to make is how are we going to harvest these trees? Um, are we better off doing wood chipping or are we better off um, hauling them in? Now, hauling them in, well, we'd have to rent a, um, a trailer. We would have to do that. But if we just wood chip, well, if we had the transportable wood chipper, we'd have to get a trailer. But if we just got the, um, the placeable one, um, that they deliver, the sawmill would deliver, then um, we could just use that. So I haven't really thought, thought that far through. I just kind of wanted to get things set up. And then I'm thinking tomorrow morning we would be able to um, get rocking and rolling on this. The only thing I want to get done tomorrow is plant the wheat. So, you know, while we're waiting around here for um, temperature wise for sugar beets and soybeans, we might as well um, stay busy and try to make some money. This is one dangerous corner, I tell you. This is a, you know, that's one thing about that farm. But right here on this busy corner, I don't know if I'd be happy with that. So, I'm very happy where we are. Very right, you know, down the gravel road. I like that idea. Flint Rock Farm. Perhaps someday down the road we have to buy that farm. I would think. 
So now where should we start? I think we should probably start on the triangle piece, the one on the left side of the road here, because if that's going to be developed into an arable field, that would be the first way to go. So I think there was an entrance when I came down here, up here to get in there. But here it is, all this nice little spot on the on the left side of the road. Yes, it's not arable, so that's why it went for a decent price. But we can develop it and uh, do what we... Whoa! What was that? Must have been a skunk. Probably hit a skunk or something. I don't smell anything yet, but that might happen. Or we got this road here on the... Um... Tell you what I think we'll do. Being I am now the owner of this. Um, we're going to pull on this side. We can always drive across the road. This is a nice gravel road. You know, we don't have to worry about getting stuck. But I think we'll just um, park right here. We will unhook it for... Well, yeah, let's just leave it hooked up just in case somebody... Well, no, they want their they want their semi back. I'm sorry. I got I got to unload it. Oops. I am I unhooked the wrong wrong um, section there. Maybe I'm not such a good uh, truck driver as I thought I was. There we go. Hop into the Scorpion King. Fire this puppy up. I had to take a quick little re online course to uh, find out how to use this thing, but I got that done. No problem, my path with flying colors. Wasn't that hard though, you only needed 70% to pass, so I at least passed. So this is going to be interesting. I think we'll park this over here. That'll be good there. Shut her down, lock her up. And then we'll take this semi back to the sawmill. They will need it. We'll have to come and get it again, or maybe the guy will be around that um, he can come and pick up our uh, the Scorpion King when the week's rent is over with. There we go. I wonder, I don't think this road goes all the way through. I think it just ends up going to be a little turnaround area. I believe. We'll find out. But this is nice. A nice area. You know? I wonder if they do any deer hunting back in here. But see, it's kind of like got the road in the middle. Oh, this doesn't go through. Uh oh, now we're in trouble. that tree buddy ah, there we go we're clear so I'll take this back to the sawmill and we'll see what time it gets um, I suppose regardless of the end of the episode or not we will start again tomorrow morning so I'll get this back and we'll see um, how late it gets to be see you in a little bit as the night sets here in Oregon Springs um, just got a few things set up for tomorrow Got the uh, New Holland, our uh, four-wheel drive tractor hooked up to the uh, the drill, the air seeder. Um, got the uh, super weeder all washed up, and I just kind of drove in there and just left it. So I think that's an okay place for now for that thing. Um, tomorrow's going to be a busy day. We'll get this field planted with wheat, and then we got to do some logging. We will do some logging and make some money and clear some of our parcels that we had purchased. So yeah, we got all kinds of stuff going on tomorrow. Um, a seed and fertilizer. I got. I got to get that on order. I better go get some um, 
some wheat seed. I'll have to do that in the morning. But I think we'll leave it there for tonight. That way we can uh, kind of stick with the, um, see if we can go by a um, one day, one episode kind of schedule. That would be kind of cool. So, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Found it useful. Found it a little entertaining. Maybe it's just a bunch of tomfoolery. But whatever. Um, if you did, give us a like. We'd appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, we would appreciate that as well. But, from Oregon Springs, Farmer Min Town, yeah, have yourself a great day and keep in between the ditches. So long.